Hello, hello, hello! Yes, it's me again! I have returned from my very, very, very long absence. Just kidding, it's been, what, a couple of hours? This is our final video of the breakdown of what's come out of New York Comic Con over the weekend. Have a check back and you'll see we've done a full breakdown of the Star Trek Picard Season 3 trailer. We've also done a general news breakdown with the teaser for Discovery, because there was, there was just enough in the Discovery teaser that we thought it would just be better to make it part of the news video. We had to record an extra bit because Jonathan Frakes tweeted something that we had to add to our news report. But during this video, I will be able to discuss another little bit of news that came out since as well. But we're going to go through everything that's in the Prodigy trailer that was released this weekend. Now, one of the biggest bits of news wasn't in the trailer, but it was released at the panel at New York Comic Con. A very brazen fan got up during the Q&A session and asked directly, are we ever going to see live action Janeway again? To its... Alex Kurtzman replied cryptically, it's been discussed. Oh God, okay, so are we actually gonna get Janeway back in live action? Because the last time we saw live action Janeway was of course 2002 in Star Trek Nemesis. We know Picard is ending, but we're hoping for a spin-off series. Is this in fact where we might see Janeway again? A spin-off series that might see the return of Seven, and then you have a couple of Voyager people anyway. Jonathan Frakes obviously tweeted as well, saying that the uh, season three of Picard might not be the final voyage of the TNG crew. Are we gearing towards some sort of massive crossover event? Or are we, as we are very much hoping, just heading toward another live action series that's set during this point of Star Trek's history. Now that is something I really, really want, whether that's Star Trek Janeway, Star Trek Seven, uh, you know, Star Trek TNG meets Voyager as they fly past ES9. I'm just looking forward to all of it. We are in a glorious age of both nostalgia and news stories, but with the potential for Janeway to return to live action, that opens the door to an awful lot more. So fingers crossed that this is not just some horrible prank that they've cooked up on us. So as you know, we are halfway through season one of Star Trek Prodigy and we're going to get the second half, which begins airing on October 27th. It'll be the 28th on this side of the pond. We are so excited because the first big bit of news is not even in the trailer. The big bit of news is Edward Jellico. Yes, that's right. He who commanded the Enterprise during Chain of Command will be a recurring character. Don't know how they're going to fit it. It could just be orders on a screen. That's what we've seen. The only screenshot we've seen so far is him on a screen. So per I'm assuming it's going to be a remote role, but I'm excited just to see how he interacts with Janeway as well, because we've only ever seen him interact, of course, with Picard. Now, onto the trailer as a whole. So it opens up with the protostar in orbit of an ice planet. I think this is going to come actually a little bit, you know, maybe episode two or three, because there's a couple of scenes in the trailer where you see our regular crew in what seems to be, you know, cold insulation jackets. You also then see Admiral Janeway and her crew in thermal versions of their uniform. Forms. So it looks like the Dauntless is chasing them and, you know, there's some sort of heist going on because they're there escaping on some sort of flatbed truck. I think there's going to be a, a couple of episodes in before we see where this is and how close the Dauntless is going to come to them several times. We actually get a lovely scene of before any of this, the Dauntless is going to arrive at Tars Lamora because as the trailer opens, you have Dal doing a captain's log. He's having a com badge pinned onto his chest by hologram Janeway. And as he talks about how far they've come from Tars Lamora, a wide pan shows the Dauntless flying in over the settlement. Now that was a cool shot that took me a couple of watches to get. We get a quick shot of Rock Talk looking sad. We get Jan Campagas working away. We get Jason Alexander's lovely voice. Now, of course, he has been in Star Trek Voyager before in the episode Think Tank. Here, he's playing a Denobulan. On first glance, you look at him, he's wearing science blue. You're like, oh, is he is he the Doctor? In line with the, you know, the Denobulan we saw as Dr. Phlox. But no, according to Aaron Walkie on Twitter, he is a lone station occupant who's had to step up and do but he was the acting chief of operations job. He's got a combination of the Voyager Field Commission badge or insignia and also standard insignia as well. I took the first time I saw a picture of this, the fact that he was going to be a member of the Dauntless crew always. I actually no longer think that's the case. I think that the crew of the Protostar are going to encounter him before 
they encounter the Dauntless. Now, there's a funny exchange where he says, oh, I suppose they just handed you a free starship. And Jankum, who is honest, just goes, actually, we stole it. And Dal sort of hits him on the shoulder. I love it because it's continuing that trend. These are the characters that we understand from the first 10 episodes. Jankum is just honest. He just says what he's thinking. Dal is trying to not be dishonest, of course, but he's like, come on, be a bit tactful in your honesty. And then, of course, you have, you know, Jason Alexander's character is just like, Starfleet doesn't generally hand out the controls of starships to kids. So can we get an explanation, please? Now, that's when we get that wonderful shot of, you know, you see the protostar from aft and the Dauntless rises in front of it. Now, already there's been a bit of discussion about how big the Dauntless is compared to the protostar. But actually, when you think about it, the protostar being an experimental ship and seeing what we've seen on the inside, it's actually not that big. You know, it's barely bigger than the Defiant. It's sort of like, almost like a runabout of Starship class. So when you have the Dauntless, which is, let's say, standard Starship class, yes, it would be quite a bit bigger. Uh, I do understand that first jarring sight of like, uh, hang on, they're small, and then there's like, are we doing a one little ship on this? But no, actually, it's just the Dauntless is a heavy cruiser for deep space exploration, and the Protostar is a very lost little scout ship. Now, that's when we get the shot of Janeway is chasing these people down. Now, this this is where I presume this comes after the scene on the ice planet, because you have the crew on the bridge are all in their thermals. You know, Janeway's firing torpedoes, and hologram Janeway doesn't fancy their chances. And who else is standing on that bridge? It's only Thaddean O'Connor. Now, we know, of course, Billy Campbell is returning to the role of O'Connor that he originated in Star Trek The Next Generation's second season, The Outrageous O'Connor. What a random character to bring back. The amount of Trek alumni that are coming back between all of the trailers and teasers over this weekend. I mean, for love of God. Anyway, this O'Connor is a very different character because he's got... He's got a lovely eye patch on him and he's been greyed up very nicely. In conversation with the Hageman brothers, I can reveal that Billy Campbell said to them that he'd love to come back, but there has to be a change to the character. He didn't just want to do the same character again. So I'm looking forward to seeing how different they do O'Connor while still giving honour to the O'Connor that we would know as an audience. For the full interview with the Hageman brothers, you keep an eye out for the Clone Star podcast that will be dropping shortly on our channel. We then get a couple of surfaces of planets, I think done back to back. The first being the ice planet. Now the second one being one that seems to be heavily inspired by the original series. All of the people standing on the planet are in these makeshift sewn together TOS era uniforms. And you do get a shot of a lot of them as well firing TOS era phasers. Now they're also trying to do the Vulcan salute, except they're doing it like that. Anyone who's tried to do the Vulcan salute for the first time probably did something like that or did something like that. You know, you know, it's, it's, you can't just do it straight away. Now, I've been doing this for a while, but I've had practice. Let's say it's a, a planet of fanboys, or it could be, you know, a planet of just imitators. They're trying so hard to be Federation that it's so earnestly funny and they don't get a line of dialogue. And I'm already looking forward to whatever that episode is going to be about. We get another shot then of O'Connor, but this time it's when he's standing beside the character who seems to know Dal's backstory. So does that mean that O'Connor is the gateway through which Dal will learn who and, well, what he is? Because we still don't know what his species is and how is O'Connor related to that? If O'Connor has been Alpha Quadrant for the longest period of time, considering, remember, O'Connor cameoed in Lower Decks as well, only a couple of years before this, is Dal actually an Alpha Quadrant race? And if so, how have we not run into them already? Now, there's a couple of quick shots after this. One is Admiral Janeway going, who are these kids? Meaning she obviously knows that the crew is like, made up of children. So she's probably wondering like, hang on, I'm firing torpedoes and everything at this. How are they getting away? And then there's another quick shot, which seems to be underwater. And you have the crew of the Protostar are being attacked by what seems to be mer people. Uh, maybe this is, you know, th th this is the great tie in with the Disney live action mermaid that we've been wanting for so long. Who knows? I'm, I'm here for it. I think this will be our first mer people in Star Trek, but we have had aquatic races before. Of course, let's not forget the Zindi Aquatics from Enterprise. And of course, Cetacean Operations. Is this a new race that we might see taking their place on Starfleet vessels? Who knows? Who knows? Of course, one of the big reveals of the trailer is 
the Borg Cube. Straight away, I'm going to say I'm interested to see how this goes and in what way the Borg factor into Prodigy. Because one of my criticisms in the past with Star Trek Voyager is how the Borg were overused to the point where they just weren't scary anymore. You know, I still, I really enjoy Endgame as an episode, but I have to say I was seriously suffering Borg fatigue at that point. And one of the reasons I give so much credit to Regeneration from the second season of Enterprise is that they managed to make the collective scary again. Picard has used the Borg, of course, already. There's been mention of the Borg in Star Trek Discovery, but here we are now in Star Trek Prodigy. Now, while Prodigy isn't actually a uh, like a small kid's TV show, like it's not for four and five year olds, I really struggle to see the Borg assimilating the crew of the Protostar. So is this actually the Borg? Is this a lost cube? Is this another holographic program, much like Kobayashi? Remains to be seen. Looking forward to it. I'm as I say, I'm interested to see how they do it. And as well, if you look closely, they are using the aesthetic of the alcoves that was established in Star Trek Picard. So we're keeping in line with that look as well. So as I said, Prodigy will be dropping on October the 27th in the US and October the 28th across the pond here. We will be bringing you uh, all of the ups and downs every single week. So please make sure that you have subscribed to the channel so that you can stay on top of all those notifications. Uh, a quick message to all of my friends out there who were at New York Comic Con. If any of you can find it in your hearts to get a Murph plushie to me, I'd be ever so grateful. Everyone, thank you so much. Thank you for following our breakdowns of all of the news over the weekend. You can find all of the other videos on various links on this channel. So thank you so much. Please don't forget to like and share this video as well. Don't forget, catch us on Twitter at Trek Culture. Catch us on Instagram at Trek Culture YT. And you can also catch myself at Sean Ferrick on Twitter and at Sean.Ferrick88 on Instagram. Everyone, you are so awesome. Thank you so much for watching these videos. Thank you so much for your support. As always, I have been Sean. You are wonderful. However long it is until I see you again, live long and prosper.